The next type of object association we're going to discuss is the group. It's the next level in commitment between objects. It's more significant commitment than in a selection set is. In order to group objects, you merely hold down your control key and select several objects together. Go over to the group drop down menu and choose group. You're now given a specific menu and we're going to call this group things. You say OK and now the group is created. You'll notice that this group looks a little different than the selection set that we had earlier. For example, you'll notice that first of all there's one bounding box for all four objects where before in the selection set there was an individual bounding box. You'll also notice that there is only one pivot point for this object. So even though these are four explicitly different objects, they're now treated as one single object. You can still go in and modify and adjust the individual objects. For example, if we go to the group drop down menu and choose open, we are now our bounding box is now turned into a pink box. We can now select the object and for example, let's say we wanted to animate this object. I can go in here and I'll choose my rotate tool and I'll animate that object. Perhaps we want to animate this object as well. And we'll turn off our animation tool and perhaps we just want to change the size of this object. I can still go in and do those things independently. But if I close the group, turn on my animate button, and you'll see, first of all, we still have those individual objects performing their functions. But I can also treat this object as a single object. And in this case, I'll do a rotation. So now, when I play back my animation, we have objects still doing their own things, yet being treated as a single object. This is a group. I sometimes compare groups to dating where there is there there's a higher level of commitment than there are with selection sets but yet each object still has its own individual identity